Hey everybody, gonna wait just a few seconds. Uh, I am testing, I, I know I'm pretty sure I'm in the right place. But anyway, uh, tonight we are going to be talking about Miss Lillian's Ultimate Cabinet Paint. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, let's see, yes, there it is. Just want to make sure that I am in the right place. Uh, that's always kind of a scary thing. And listen, y'all, uh, if you have any questions, uh, Miss Lillian is in here, so she will answer all of your questions uh, because it's just too hard for me to keep up with everybody. And plus, I can't see that far away. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm really excited about this because uh, this is what I used to do, uh, cabinet finishing. And yes, I do preach about prep, okay? But you know what? If you don't get that foundation right, the outcome could fail and we don't want that. But first, I'm going to introduce myself. I am Renee Holder of Two Chatty Chicks and I am located in Little Rock, Arkansas. So if there's any of y'all out there in this area that would like to come and see me, I teach at a lot of different, several different locations uh, and you can find out about that on my page. And um, we're really glad that you're here at Miss Lillian's. And um, we are going to, oh, and if you're watching live, uh, just type in hashtag live. And if you're catching the replay, just type in, type in um, hashtag replay. And I don't want to forget, if y'all would like to be entered into uh, winning the an ounce, eight ounce of Miss Lillian's original wax chalk paint, share and like, but be sure and let us know that you have shared. That way we can get your name in on the drawing. So, all right, without any further ado, we're going to get started. And um, again, I can't stress enough the importance about prep. And so before we get to the pretty stuff, that's what we're going to go over. And um, the one thing that's kindly forgotten about sometimes is your pre-stain condition. It's clear and you put it on. I just usually put it on with a chip brush and then I throw the chip brush away because it's inexpensive. And um, it does just that. And I have two doors here that are oak. This one has nothing on it, and this one has been uh, preconditioned, and it does just that. And what that does is it will condition the door to accept if you're going to stain it, then it will stain evenly. Because if you put it on some doors like this, it may, because of the grain of the wood, it may stain darker and lighter in areas, and you really don't want that. So it's very important that you precondition. And not only for staining, um, if you were gonna go ahead and paint these, the uh, pre-stain condition will um, prepare your door so that whenever you apply your first paint of, uh, coat of paint, uh, it doesn't soak in. So it, it's it's wonderful product, it's really good. And what that does too is it will bring up the fuzz, it's what we call fuzz, and all you have to do is just take, sometimes I'll just use one of these green scrubbies, kind of go over it and I'll knock that down, wipe the dust off and you're ready to go with either stain or paint. So sometimes that's forgotten. I want to be sure and share that with y'all. And <clears throat> this here is, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you about this first and then I'll show you that. Um... Also, if you are going to be doing cabinets that are already stained and they are cedar, pine, something like that, that has like what we call tannin in it, you're going to want to use a shellac paste and it's prevention. And this is Miss Lynn's and it is um, a really light gray and it's shellac based again. And um, what I do is you want to make, it's white, it will gray, it's not white, uh, but it's very light. And you are going to make sure that you stir that really well. And what I do in my lids is I take a nail and I'll kind of make holes. That way whenever I pour this out into a different container, that will drain back in. And then you take press and seal, put it under the lid, 
put the lid on, and then <clears throat> I'll take a cotton cloth, put over the top, use my hammer to make sure it's good, shake it up really well. You do not want air getting into this. Mine doesn't last that long, so. Uh, now, the uh, thing that I wanted to show you is it's an awful lot to get into finding out what finish is on your cabinets, but this is one I did want to share with you. Um, a friend of mine that has taken a lot of my classes, Sandy, um, she was doing this as a gift, and she was using Miss Lillian's Image Transfer, and she contacted me, and she said, Renee, I can't figure out what's wrong with this door. And um, she said, it's peeling up. And I said, well, bring it to me and let me look at it. And I knew as soon as I saw it what it was. It has a wax on it. And you can see, if you take your finger and run it back and forth, you can feel this gumminess underneath your fingernail. And it, it's not showing that you're scratching the wood, but you are scratching that wax and you can see it. So if you have this on your cabinets, you're going to have to strip it by using mineral spirits, and uh, very important. So that is one reason I never recommend using wax on cabinets. Now, some people don't mind, but whenever I was doing cabinets, I would um, talk to my clients and say, you know, uh, say eight, ten years down the road, you want to change. You're going to have to strip that off, and then it's hard to find finishers that will take that extra step because it's a lot of work. So just keep that in mind. And that is one thing I did want to share with you. And <clears throat> this one here, this test, I love it. Every time I show it, it's just amazing. This is one of those tiles, ceramic tiles, that is so slick, okay? One coat, this is the end of Miss Lillian's two inch thatch brush. And look, that is going nowhere. That to me is the ultimate test. And um, if I was still doing cabinets, I would be using her product. And whenever I walked out the door, I'd never worry about the finish that I just finished using her product. So that says a lot for me. And I need, let me get all this out of the way. Now, this is a cabinet door. I've kind of done like a cooking session here, and yes, we'll get to the fun stuff here in just a minute, but I want y'all to really understand how important this is. This is one coat of the primer, and that's it. And you, I mean, you might see a little bit of the yellow undertone, but that's all I'm gonna worry about. See that? That is a screwdriver going on that, and there are no marks whatsoever. None. So that right there tells me all I need to know about the primer. Fantastic. <clears throat> so, and there'll be another test for the screwdriver in just a minute. Now, um, oh, and y'all let us know where you're from. Uh, we love to know where you're from. And again, if you like and share, be sure and let us know so that you can be put in the drawing for uh, Miss Lynn's original no wax chalk paint, eight ounce. And uh, also, if there's something that y'all would like to learn, you would like for us to show you how to do, ask us. Just put it in the comments, let us know what you would like uh, for some of us to do, and I'll guarantee you somebody out there can do it and we'd love to do it for you. Um, don't make fun of this cabinet door because it has been put through the ringer really a lot. <laughs> but I wanted to show y'all how Miss Lillian's first step prep works. And I know y'all have seen me talk about this, but it's just that important. I've already sanded this very lightly with 220 grit sandpaper. I've taken 50-50 vinegar and water, wiped it down, and... <clears throat> Normally with the first step prep, I would use just one of these green scrubbies 
and spray it on there and you would go around and around like that. But for tonight, I wanted y'all to see just how much dirt and grime that would take off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this white, there's nothing on that, okay? And I'm gonna spray it. And I was really shocked whenever I used this the first time See how dirty that is? Look at that dirt. That is absolutely amazing to me. So, <clears throat> um, that right there, if you don't get that off, it's going to be under your finish. And you know what? As soon as that's dry, I do not have to wash it off. I can go right in and start painting put my primer on if I need primer or I can start painting and that was one thing that whenever I used TSP before I always worried because you had to make sure you got all of that off so you don't have to do that with this Miss Leon's first step prep you use it you let it dry you go on to your next step you're ready to go so I want to and y'all I'm still fighting the throat thing so no, they can't figure out what's wrong but I just have to have something to kind of drink every once in a while. <clears throat> and I want to talk to you about brushes. Um, I love, this is Miss Lillian's. It's round and you can see how it comes out here. And this is the one I'm going to use tonight because sometimes people are afraid to use different brushes. I use this a lot because I'll show you why. It, this is her uh, two inch sash brush you can get right up in there and just come right down. But I just wanted to show you different brushes. Um, and this one, this is also a great brush because it gets up in there as well. But again, sometimes people are really afraid to try different things. So we're gonna use the, I call it the stubby brush. <laughs> and whenever I'm through with my brushes, I clean them and I wrap them and I put a rubber band around them. That way all my bristles are gonna stay in place and they're not gonna get messed up. And I guess y'all are ready for me to move on with the fun stuff. And so, oh, and I'll show y'all before I turn the camera down. If you're gonna be doing your own cabinets, you've got to have a Lazy Susan. That way you can set that door on there and you can turn it around and around can't live without it if you're going to do your cabinets or you can make your own i made this one you can get the mechanism and put your two pieces together so that's my tidbit for the night <clears throat> okay uh, i'm going to show you how i apply the paint you can use a sprayer uh, home right makes one which is fantastic it's not a hvlp but uh, it will get the job done but you know what I don't mind using a brush because that's what I used for a long time until I did get a sprayer. So, and I've already shaken this up and tonight I'm going to be using the Ultimate Cabinet Paint Old Cover. It is really um, a favored color. People really do like this color. And again, I, oh, and I wet my brush just a little bit before I use it. I never put my brush in my containers. I'm going to always pour it in a plate because I don't want to contaminate my container. And once you've contaminated one, you'll never forget it because it stinks. Now, y'all be sure and like and share so you can be put in for Miss Lillian's. Uh, so you can see if you win the 8 ounce uh, Miss Lynn's uh, No Wax Chalk Paint. All right, let me, I'm trying to make sure I haven't missed anything before I turn the camera down. Um, I will show y'all this. This was before um, Miss Lynn's Ultimate Cabinet Paint. This is uh, Statesberry, and it's one of my favorite colors, and I wanted to show um, the tonal value of the paint. This is her ebony water-based antiquing glaze. This is the white. 
and it just shows you the different values that you can get by using the glaze. It's, it's just unbelievable the different looks that you can get. And so I think that's, I just really want, oh, I'll show y'all one more. Bella Coral. But yes, it's a very bright color. And, but it just shows you this has nutmeg antiquing water-based glaze on it. It's amazing what people, once they see the difference of uh, the look that they can get by just adding a glaze, then they're more apt to try different colors. So keep that in mind. That's Bella Coral with nutmeg glaze over it. I think it's just a beautiful color. So... Okay, now I'm going to turn this down so that y'all can see how I, and y'all, I really can't tell, so I'm really praying that I have everything in motion here. <laughs> so, and like I said, I do dampen my brushes just a little, and then I squeeze the water out, and that really kind of keeps uh, the paint from getting up in your ferrule. And I really am hoping that y'all can see this. So, and what I do is I I load both sides of my brush, just like that. And I start up here in this corner. And I'm going to do both sides. That way I can flip it and turn it. Okay. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing. And y'all, less is more. You do not have to saturate your brush with paint. Less is more. I preach that all the time. Okay, and then I can come and I can fill this in. And look, look how smooth that is going on. I mean, it's just awesome to work with. And the reason, again, is I'm lightly going and I got that up a little farther than what I normally do but it's I'm trying to make sure that y'all see is I'm going to lay that brush right here on that edge and I'm going to come down this away and then I can flip it I can lay it down and I can pull it up this away and another thing that I always try to stress is whenever you're applying your paint you don't want to do this you want to make sure that it's even straight strokes because if you don't sometimes that can show up on down the line so I've got paint on both sides gonna push it out to the edge and as I come down I'm gonna lift up and then I'm gonna flip it over I'm gonna push it out to the edge and pull it up and you just want to make sure that if you get any little bubbles or runs here that you want to come back and lightly wipe that up because you don't want that once you're finished and you can see I've still not put any more paint on my brush and then I'm going to just lightly I'm barely touching that paint and I'm done that's all you got to do okay and then I do the same thing on the ends I'm going to come across this way all the way across and I'm going to make sure that I have that done, the end done, and this side. And then I'm going to come back and go across just like that. Then I'm going to come down and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do the ends. Okay, and then I'm going to lay that down right there and I'm going to come all the way across. And that gives me that straight edge. Now, a very little brush, y'all. I mean, very little paint. I can't emphasize that enough. You can see I'm almost just, I'm going in and pulling the paint out to put it on my brush. And then I'm going to start because I want a straight line right here. So I'm going to lay that down. You can see that's giving me that straight line, okay? And I'm going to come down, and then I can come up here, and I can flip that over, and then I can come back. 
and then I can fill it in. And as I'm, I'm filling in, you can see the motion that I have. I'm going like that. And you know what? This is going to be enough coverage that I'm not going to have to put another coat on. It's plenty. And you know what? I've got a piece of fuzz right there. And I'm going to show you how to take care of that. Take the edge of a chip brush and see how I took that up and it brought it right out. And it didn't even leave a mark. Same thing for the other side. I'm just going to put a little paint on the brush. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to push that down. Now see, I've got a little bit of a ridge there that I don't like. See how I just took that right away? So now I have less paint on my brush, which that's what I needed. And I'm going to end that down, and I'm going to take this. Okay, that is one door, and I'm done. But I want to be sure and tell y'all that if you're doing your kitchen cabinets, you're gonna want to do your backsides first. You're gonna let that dry, and then you're gonna move to the front. Okay, that is all there is to that. And you can get these little jobber daubers at, um, oh, it went blank, Home Depot or Lowe's hardware store. And this is what you can set your doors on. So I'm going to set this aside. Okay, and y'all, I'm gonna set my brush in water. And I also hang my brushes up to let them dry. Now the fun part, okay? We are going to add truffle antiquing water-based glaze. These are Miss Lillian's sponges, and this is how they come. And I got to um, playing with a piece of furniture the other day, and I thought, hmm, so I cut it in two. You know the carving turkey knives? <laughs> Well, I cut it in two, and I dampen these, okay? I get them wet, and you want to make sure you wring all of the water out. And I'm going to leave one in water for my glazing purposes, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And I've got to remove all that fuzz that I got on there from that. Okay. <clears throat> now, see, by having that on that Lazy Susan, see how you can just flip that around? Pretty, pretty cool. All right, now I'm just going to use one of Miss Lynn's chip brushes. And again, I am still, doesn't matter if it's glazed, I've shaken it really well. And I'm going to pour just a little, and that's really too much. I didn't need that much. But that's okay. I can pour it back whenever I'm done. And I am going to put a pretty generous amount of this on, okay? Not a lot, but enough. And once you uh, play around with a couple of doors, it won't take long for you to get the swing of it. And you know what? No two doors. Oh, see, what was that saying? I forgot. Hmm. I believe my friend Sarah said that the other day to me. Uh, they're not gonna, no two doors are gonna mirror each other. They're just gonna favor or something like that. I thought it was really cute. And I told myself I wasn't gonna forget. Y'all be sure and tell us where you're from. Love to know. I love to go back and read the comments and see where everyone is from. And also, you know what? It would be kind of cool to see what products you would like to use if you haven't ever used any. She has a bunch. I think I've used everything that she has, and I don't think there's one that I have not liked. Okay. Now, like I said, this is damp, and I hold my sponge like this here. 
Okay, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put. look at that. Is that not going to be pretty? Okay, I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to pull this down. And I can turn this. See, that's getting kind of full. Yeah, I should have probably wore gloves, but that's okay. I hate gloves. Okay? And I'm going to pull this off. Okay? Stick that in the water. See how quick that was? I already washed it out. I could have used the other one, but you know what? Sometimes it's good for y'all to see exactly how we do do things sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off again. And again, it just depends on the look you are looking for. And again, this you want to make sure that you have even smooth strokes. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one because that's a little bit saturated. And see how that's pulling that off? You just want, don't be afraid of it. That's the whole key. And another thing, some people will use baby wipes to remove the glaze as well. I know a lot of the girls uh, use those. Okay, I, I really like how that is. I like how much is left in there. So I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna take off of the edge, just like that. Move those, I can turn those. All right. Now, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna come across this way, a little bit more. Gonna come across this way, and I'm gonna kind of do the same that I have done down here. And I want to take a little more of that off. I think that is just about right, and I'm gonna pull that off. And again, it just depends on the look that you are going for. Or if you're doing cabinets and you want to learn how to do cabinets, then it's gonna depend on what your customer wants. But that's where you will want to do some samples to see the look that you're going for. That's always important. Don't just dive in and start doing. You really need to do samples first. And you know what? If you wipe too much off, you want to wait until the glaze is dry and then you can add some more. All right. I like that. I hope that y'all do. I hope y'all can see that well. That's very, very pretty color. That is the truffle water-based glaze. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to throw these in the water. Because I know if I don't put the lids on, what's going to happen? I will knock it over. And what we recommend on top of Miss Lynn's Ultimate Cabinet Paint, and I'm going to apply it here. I wish I went ahead and put a glaze on this. But I'm going to show you all this in just a minute. Okay, is the Dura Shield, and it comes in two uh, lusters. And y'all, listen. If y'all have any questions, please be sure and ask, because Miss Lillian is in here, and she will answer all of your questions. Um, and if there's any that uh, I can answer, I'll hop in once we're through. But I love the Dura Shield. I did. A finish 
on uh, me and Sarah, a friend of mine, did a finish on a countertop that is in a 35,000 square foot building that is a flea market. And so you can imagine how much stuff gets put on that countertop. And I believe they're about 25 feet long, two of them. There's not a scratch on it. And this is what we use. So uh, I know how it works. It's fantastic. <clears throat> dropped my stir stick again see I can tell even though I've already started this earlier you still always want to stir because you know it's gonna settle to the bottom and you don't want that and uh, very important to always remember that stir your products uh, now I am going to apply this with the uh, two inch sash brush and again I am I just dipped that in there and I said I don't do that but this isn't going to be much and I don't have anything on this brush so and that won't last long anyway so and if you're doing a large area <clears throat> that's kind of flat you want to put the Dura Shield on and it's not doesn't take much at all again less is more it takes a lot less time for your product to dry um, you know that's really important people don't understand the difference between dry time and cure time it takes about 30 days for cure time it may feel dry in 24 48 hours but if you're doing a large surface, what we do is we apply it with a brush and then you just take a roller and I mean, I'm not putting hardly any pressure and I'm just gonna roll over that. And y'all, that is a painter's tip that I learned a long time ago. Uh, it's phenomenal what it does. And if you want, you can go in here and just lightly touch that, touch that and you're done. You wanna let it dry lightly, lightly. Uh, sand sometimes I do sometimes I don't and uh, get the dust off apply another coat so there is how easy that is to apply and uh, I'm gonna set this aside now we have one more test and I'm gonna try and turn this up to where I can see. I wish I could see y'all's faces whenever I do this screwdriver test. <laughs> uh, also, one of my doors that I did uh, before the Ultimate Cabinet Paint, and y'all, she, I think there's 49 colors. And um, the glazes, there are 10 different antiquing glaze colors. Um, and I believe there is eight in the gel stains, which is a different subject altogether. But uh, the gel stains are fabulous too. Um, this has Dura Shield on it, okay? That is amazing. I'm telling you, there's not a scratch on that anywhere. I feel like the guy from that was always behind the fence. <laughs> uh, that to me, the test that I have shown y'all tonight, those are the ultimate test. And I hope that um, y'all have learned something tonight. I really appreciate y'all taking the time to watch. And y'all be sure and uh, hop over um, now that the video is over and uh, give me a like on my two chatty chicks, which is up at the top. And be sure and keep an eye on Miss Lillian's events on the left-hand side so that y'all will see what's coming up. I'm trying to make sure I get off of here before I completely lose my voice. <laughs> so y'all have a blessed evening and thank you so much for stopping in and we will see y'all later bye y'all oh the winner y'all we've got to announce the winner the winner is land st Clair. woohoo i almost forgot y'all shame on me <laughs>
I am sorry about that. I was just so excited because I love Miss Lillian's ultimate cabinet paint. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it, y'all. I hope I got that name right. Is that correct? Land St. Clair. Yay! You're the winner. Be sure and contact uh, Miss Lillian so that they can uh, get your information and get that paint sent out to you. We appreciate it, y'all, and y'all have a very blessed evening. We really do appreciate it. Bye, y'all.